What's up guys and welcome back to a new video on my channel. In today's video I'll be interviewing Rachel Davis and Josh Falconham. Now before this video starts, get a drop a like on the video and subscribe to my channel. More than 70% of you who watch my videos aren't subscribed, so please subscribe today, it'll be a lot to me. So hit the subscribe button down below and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on every time I make a video. But let's get on to the first interview with Rachel Davis. Right guys, here's Rachel. First of all, how is Floyd Curry's injury going? Yeah, it's um it's actually not as bad as we first feared, so um I always know Lloyd's hurt um, when he stays down because he's, he's not one to uh, to mess about on the pitch. So um, we immediately feared kind of either a fracture or quite like a severe ligament damage, ligament rupture. So we x-rayed him straight away on the Saturday night, which revealed no fracture. And then he had an MRI scan um, on Monday lunchtime, um, which I was really surprised actually. I actually like questioned the radiographer because I just couldn't believe... Um, the good outcome really in the grand scheme of things so um, Lloyd has sustained um, a grade 2 injury um, to two of the ligaments in the ankle so um, on the inside of the foot um, you've got the deltoid ligaments that come down there and he has sustained what we call a partial um, tear so some, some fibres have torn but not others to these three here and then on the outside of the ankle, um, the this ligament here that runs down from the fibula to the ankle, um, to the heel bone, um, called UCFL, and he's sustained a grade two there. This ligament here is the most common that footballers tear. It's called the ATFL. They said that was pristine and couldn't believe it was a footballer. So I think what's happened um, and the reason why it looked so badly was because the player's full weight had fallen onto his ankle. So the main damage is actually swelling and soft tissue damage. So um, we've hired a piece of equipment that gets swelling down really quickly and now that's started to decrease, it's a much better outcome. So we're looking at around about six weeks for Lloyd at the minute, but he's doing really well. What are your thoughts on recent performances? Um, we've maybe not had the um, the results that we've wanted. Um, you know, the, the players are still kind of gelling together. Um, we've been work, working really hard in training and, and things like that. So um, you know, we're hoping that we'll you know we'll pick up um, some results over the uh, over the bank holiday and into next weekend. How have the new players settled? In? Yeah, they've settled in really well. It's a really nice group. Um, they're really close. Um, you know, we we sign players here that will fit in with the group and um, been doing their initiations when we've been at the away games. So they've all been singing songs. There's um, they need to stick to football and, and not to singing at the minute. But rumour has it um, Sam Jones is a very good singer. So I'm yet to yet to hear that one. So I'll have to report back on that after he's done his. Who who was the best singer so far? Oh, uh, best of a bad bunch, I'm afraid. Um, probably. Brendan, but I'm really clutching at straws so, there. Yeah, yeah. So long, okay. <laughs> what do you do on the bench when there's no injuries? Just enjoy the game. <laughs> Sunbathe, enjoy the game. Enjoy it. <laughs> I know that you have to be in attendance during training. Mm -hmm. So what sort of things do you do during that time? Um, do all sorts. Um, see Lloyd, obviously. Um, sometimes we'll pull a player out of training if there's a little niggle that we can prevent an injury happening. Um, print Alex Bradley's shirt yesterday, um, I've always got paperwork to do, sorting appointments out, um, writing player notes, things like that, ordering equipment, so there's, there's always stuff to be done. Uh, are, are, there, uh, are there any other injuries at the moment? No, nothing at all, Lloyd's the only one, a um, couple of little niggles that we, we need to deal with, but nothing that's kind of stopping um, people from playing or anything like that. Where do you think town push this season? Um, I'm hoping, um, bare minimum, you know, in the playoffs, um, pushing for promotion, um, hopefully, like last season. Do you think we'll bounce, bounce back after three games on the last? Yeah, I think we'll definitely bounce back. We've had a really good week, really tough week in training, but um, the lads are feeling really good and we're hoping for a good six points over the bank holiday weekend. What is your pre-match routine? Um, I get here, I always get here more than an hour before the players do to make sure everything's set out and, and how they like it when they come in. Um, the players will come and ask for rubs and we'll, we'll get the rubs done. Um, Gaffer comes in at quarter to two and does the team talk, so a quick gap while he does that. Um, Warren likes to have a rub at the last minute possible, so make time for him. Um, get the ankle strappings done and any last minute little bits. And then while the players go out for training, 
we'll make sure that um, we've got all the stuff pitch side that we need and everything, make sure my first aid bag's topped up and um, get changed, put my boots on and things like that. And then when the players come back in, just make sure they've got enough sock tape, smelling salts, things like that. And then, um, yeah, go out, and, go out and be ready for the game. Who is the best and worst player in the physio room? Um, some of the players I never see, which is great, so they're by far the best because they're the non the non needy ones. Um, who never comes in? I shouldn't kind of predict. I shouldn't touch wood. Um, Steady Connor Brownie never really comes in. Um, Warren Warren is great because Warren only tolerates about a three minute rub, so he's like on and off really quickly. So he's probably uh, the best as well. Worst, um, been known to make Joe Leesley cry. Um, he's he doesn't tolerate pain very well. He won't like, like me saying that. But um, who else? Uh, they're, they're a good group to be fair. They're not they're not bad. How are your wedding plans going? Wedding plans are good. Um, I've pretty much done everything. So now I'm just kind of trying to find extra stuff um, to do and buy. But we're in a bit of a kind of. Can't really do anything now until the six month mark, so I've got a couple of months to go, but they're going really well. Now finally, stop put at home. Yep. What's your score prediction? My score prediction is gonna be two nil to us. Who's gonna score? Um don't wanna give the starting players away. Um <laughs> I think Becky and Brendan. Thank you, good luck for today. Thank you very much. Now I interviewed Rachel Davis before the Stockport game where we beat them two one and Alex Bradley, a new signing, scored a ninety five minute winner to beat them. Just check this out. Anyway, enough about Saturday, let's move on to Josh Falkenham's interview. I'm here with Harry Town Captain Josh Falkenham. First of all, how do you think the season's gone so far? Um, yeah, obviously it's been a bit of an indifferent start um, for us. Um, I felt performance-wise have been good, personally, um, and as a team we've we've played some really good stuff. We've just not like us, not put the ball in the back of the net, which is something that we are kind of got used to and it's been a bit... Um, you know, tough to see really the lads in front of goal not taking the chances and, and, it, and it's cost us and we've given us, ourselves, you know, in games where we've been dominant and, and really the better side in the majority of the games. We've felt that we've chased the game way too much. But like I say, we've we had a good couple of results over the bank holiday weekend, so the confidence, the positivity has, has come back and hopefully we can kick on from that. Now the main talking point of the last few games is John said this allow goal. What's your thoughts on it? Me personally, I thought it was a goal. It was we celebrated like any other yeah. goal. We, you know, it's always a tough place to go. Is filed. We've had some um, unfortunate results there in the past, and whenever you finish a game at filed, whether it be home or away, you know that you've been in a real, real tough physical battle. Um, and we'd worked so hard. As, as game plan had been really good. The weather obviously played a massive part, and. Fitness levels was was really coming on strong, and when you when you work so hard to get a goal that we felt was absolutely fine, that was the toughest thing about it to take. And yeah. um, with many discussions, we've seen it. I watched it back two or three times, and if there is a handball or not, um, or it's touched John's fingers, then you know it's not really changed the direction of the ball. It's the ball's going in that direction anyway, and for me, it should have counted. It was so close, we were behind the goal, we couldn't tell at all. Um, what's it like being the captain? Yeah, it's obviously a role that I'm really proud of. Um, in my career growing up, you know, I've been captain um, at other clubs all the way through youths and, and, and things like that. So, um, when the gaffer obviously gave me the captaincy here, it was a real proud moment and at any point, you know, to be thought of as a captain, as a leader. Um, it's something that I really enjoy doing um, and I feel personally I play, play my best stuff um, in that role um, and like I say yeah it's, it's, it's been great we've had really good success so obviously that makes everything better um, and much sweeter but um, no it's a, it's a role that I'm yeah, really proud of and, 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 and love doing How do you feel when you're in a tunnel like ready to walk out for a game? I think the lads are used to now I have my own little ways I'm quite superstitious 
I don't like to smile too much. Um, I'm just in a zone that, you know, um, I can't really describe really. It's just something personal to me that that moment I'm, I'm ready and I'm, I'm, I'm preparing myself really to go, go into every single game exactly like the same, you know. Um, mentally preparing myself, physically, you know, just getting getting myself ready and um, when when you're in that tunnel, it's game on. Mm-hmm. Now you've played in the Scottish Leagues before, how did you feel when you when you uh, got promoted with Dun- Dunfermline and Athletic? Yeah, obviously I had some really good times, I spent four years of my career at Dunfermline, real good club, um, went from some really tough times some, um, and then obviously good times to finish. Um, and yeah, really loved my time in Scotland. Um, I had in the in the end, I think it was about six and a half years, five and a half years up there. So, um, like I say, I look back on really fond memories, and to obviously leave on a real high like we did to get the club back to where it belongs, and if not in the SPL for my, it's, it's, a, it's a huge club up there, and definitely in in the top ten, I believe, in Scottish football. Um, and I've, I've still got some great friends. Um, my family obviously used to come up a lot and visit. Um, and looking back, I had some really, really good times. What was it? Is it what was it like playing against Celtic and Rangers? Things like that. Really good. Yeah, obviously great, massive clubs. And I think obviously from being down in England, when you, you when you talk about you know English lads going up to Scotland, a lot of them might look at it as um, a weaker side. You know, a weaker. Um, but I I believe the the, the Scottish football and the fo- Scottish football leagues are really good leagues and uh, tough to play. The only difference that that they don't have up there compared to down here is the competitive side in terms of there's only ten teams in a league, so you end up playing some teams three, four, and if you get them in the cups five and six times a year, so that that's that's the only downside to it. But the stadiums that you're playing in, the sides that you're going up against. Celtic and Rangers, until you're up there, you don't realise realise how big they are, and they are huge, huge football clubs. So when you're going up against them, it's it's great. You know, myself going to Rangers, scoring a goal at Ibrox, it'll stay with me forever. Do you know what I mean in my career? So um, I really enjoyed it, and, and and some really good clubs, great stadiums, and good atmospheres that you're playing in front of. What is your pre-match routine? Pre-match routine. Where do I start? I like to eat late. A lot of lads like to get the pre-match in, the food in, um, round about half eleven. I'm actually quite late in terms of I like to eat um, a sandwich uh, and have a bit of chocolate, a bit of energy, around about half past twelve. Um, I come into the ground, I like to read the programme myself, uh, I sat on my little chair in normally Rachel's room or if we're in the air dressing room I'll, I'll, I'll still go through it and, and read the programme myself. Um, and then we go into the ref's room. Um, obviously being captain that's a role that you have to do um, with the manager also present um, and then I'm back out um, go through some stretches uh, before the, before we go out for his warm up and then once once we come in um, I, I do the same kind of stuff put the right side shin pad then left side shin pad before um, and, and superstitious wise I, I, I do the exact same things before every game so I'm quite I think the lads now have got to know me um, they know what I do and, and they just leave me to it really As a captain how crucial is your role as a, a, in the team? Um, I think to be honest when I was a lot when I was younger and I used to do the role I felt that it was a responsibility as much as it is a responsibility that you're given you know you need to be a um, do the things right I just see it now as just do my own, play my own game, and, and and do everything like I would do if I wasn't captain. So, when I was younger, I felt that once you got the armband, you had to do things differently sometimes, and you know maybe say things at certain points. But for me, being a captain and being a you know I like to think that we've had some really good times at Harrogate and been successful. It's just all about being myself, and then everybody else will, will follow suit. So, um, it's not about trying too hard. Yeah, all right. Everybody knows that I'm vocal, but knowing when to speak at the right times, picking and choosing. Um, if I feel that somebody, you know, positive it, it is is what I'm all about, and making sure that you pick up the lads when they may be down, or if, for instance, you need to get a reaction out of some lads, that's my job. That's what I'm what I'm I, I've been given the responsibility to do. So, um, but I'll only ever be myself, and I believe that that's the best thing 
as being a captain, that's that's what I try and do myself. What's it like hearing the fans uh, chanting your name every game? Amazing, yeah, that's surreal. You know, um, I've had it at previous clubs as well, which is always nice to hear. Fans have always appreciated, you know, um, performances and, and, and the way who I am and the, the way that I like to play the game. Um, so it's always nice, um, and especially obviously um, with the Harrogate fans here, um, they're really loud. Um, it's really good and you can hear with it being a tight little ground um, as a player if they say that they don't you know they don't take no or they can't hear it they're probably lying to you because yeah you do hear it and it gives you a real good buzz. Uh, out of all teams you play for which which fans have the best chance for you? I like the Harrogate one I just think um, I think they like to say that I'm four foot two so uh, I don't <laughs> I'm a little bit bigger than that but um, it's all fun and games and it's probably the best one in terms of the thought of it themselves, you know, like it's a unique kind of song that I've never had before. Some other places where I've been, it's kind of been the same chant that they find the name and it fits. Do you know what I mean? Whereas here, it's um, unique in terms of it's the first time I've ever heard that chant before. As well as being captain for the first team, you're the under 21 manager. How's that going? Really good, really good. I've had obviously a good two years. We've had success as well, which is brilliant. Um, and what the manager and Thurs and um, both of them allowed me to, to do is really just kind of find out it's my first pr proper coaching role that I've been given. Um, I did my B licence at 25, 26 whilst I was up in Scotland so it was a, a path that I wanted really to get myself stuck into and fortunately it was just I was at the right place at the right time kind of thing when I when I joined Harrogate that Thurs moved up to be the assistant manager and I ended up coming into that role so it's allowed me to, you know, the freedom of being able to make my own decisions, work out what kind of manager, what make some bad decisions, make some good decisions, and learn from it myself. Um, and I've I've loved every minute of it. I believe that the group that I've got now, I managed to work with them last year, and we've changed the system that you've set up a little bit with, with introducing for the first time an under nineteen side. So I managed to work with a side that I had, and they're progressing into the under twenty ones again this season. Um, and it's probably the strongest side that I've, I've had in the two years and then this will be my third so they're a great bunch um, they've done great in pre-season I've got a lot of them out playing first team regular football um, on a Saturday which is ultimately my goal and then if I can try and produce that one player for the manager and, um, and get them into the first team that'll be absolutely that'll be the icing on the cake for me What was it like having, in pre-season having some of your unthrown on players playing alongside your team? Brilliant, yeah that would have really nice thing to see you know um, it's it's difficult in terms of obviously the under 21s are only part time and the first team are full time um, so trying to get that you know the step up to make it as, as easy as possible but when the lads come in and they got asked they come sometimes into training um, which is always also great to see and you know training alongside them not as the manager but I can hopefully give them advice while training with them which I, I try to do um, but when obviously they come onto the pitch against Nairsborough in the, in the pre-season friendly, it was great from my side to, to, to see that uh, and, and the progression that when they did come on, you could see that they, they, were, they were comfortable, they were not so nervy and they were able to um, perform like they do for me in the 21s, so that was great as well. Where do you think Town Vision will this season? Where do I think? <sighs> tough question, tough question. It's a tough league, it's relentless. Um, I think at the minute we just take every game as it comes. Um, we had a really good season last year, finishing the playoffs, and, and we've got to keep this momentum that the club's achieved in the last couple of years of being right up there and challenging um, at the top, and, and that's where I believe where we want to be um, setting the sights on. But like I said, not get too far ahead of ourselves. We'll we'll stick to what we're doing week in week out, and hopefully produce good performances that they will look after themselves and, and the lead tech will look after itself. So it's only early days, but yeah, we'll be wanting to be right up there again come the end of the season. Now, next two games are Dover and Trolley. What are your hopes for those two games? Like I say, we've we've obviously had a bit of an up and down start this year. Um, we've had a good bank holiday couple of games, you know, four points out of six over a really tough Saturday-Monday period as a player that's physically and mentally demanding. Um, so it's given us the confidence to hopefully go into these two games again, relentless games, non-stop, constant. Um, so we'll be looking to get more positive results and hopefully we can just get ourselves, like I say, on a bit of a run, target little periods. Um, and this is another little period uh, during the season 
um, and we'll be looking to come out hopefully at home with, with two wins, that's what we'll be setting out to do. We know they get, if football was that easy then um, we wouldn't have to turn up, but we'll have to make sure that we, we, we set a stall out early, start the game strong and hopefully um, the lads you know, will, will take care of the result come the end of it. Thank you Josh, good luck for Saturday. Cheers pal. Cheers brother. Thank you. That's it for another Chief Brady video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye bye.